Hi, my name is Chris Surrett and I am part of A for Adventure. At A for Adventure, our goal is to inspire people to connect to the outdoors, to spend more time in the natural world. So we are constantly driving all over the place to capture things, to share with you folks in hopes that we can inspire. We partnered with Steel Auto Group to take this EV out and put it to the test. So for 21,000 kilometers now, which is how far we've driven, we have been all over the place and we have been asked so many questions and our experience with this EV has been really interesting. So without further ado, let's get into them. Here are our top five most commonly asked questions. Let's go. The biggest, most obvious benefit of an electric vehicle with the price of gas being so high these days and showing no signs of slowing down, to fully charge an electric, electric vehicle, you're looking at around $10. That is substantial, considering that this exact vehicle in the gas version probably costs about $70 right now to fill up, or maybe even more. With a lot of renewables into the mix, you can kind of create your own power source to, to fully charge this thing up. So the future of charging is incredibly exciting for us. The ability to charge at home is so awesome. It's so convenient, it's so easy. It takes less than 10 seconds to plug it in at the end of the day, and you wake up and it's fully charged and ready to go. The cost of an at-home charger varies. Some manufacturers will throw them in for free with the purchase of your car. Others will cost you under $1,000, plus to have an electrician come in to do the installation. All of your charging is done through an app. This is where you can schedule when you want your car to charge, and you can keep track of all of the charging you've done to see how much you're spending, to see how much power you're putting in the car. Super neat. It's so convenient, it's so easy, and I think people have this misconception that they're always gonna be trying to find a fast charger. That's just not true. You will not have to go and find a fast charger. You only need to seek that out on longer road trips, which we'll get into now. I think it's safe to say that for most people, range and having to charge on long road trips are what is holding most people back from an EV. Well, I'm here to say that it's really not that complicated. We have gone on tons of long range road trips and we do need to rely on those fast chargers when you're on those longer trips. There is apps that show you where they are, you can plan out your trip beforehand, and because the range on these things, like an REV, is over 400 kilometers, you don't have to rely on them as much as you think you do. And when you're making stops, you're not staying for hours at a time. You're literally staying for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, usually just long enough to grab a coffee, have a snack, maybe write a couple emails. And the cost, usually five, six, seven dollars each time. On top of that, there's tons of free chargers that are around at retail places, at national parks, at community centers where you don't have to pay anything. You plug in, you walk away, do some errands, come back, she's charged up. People are always asking us, yes, EVs are great. I'm sure they're great in the summer. What about the winter? I've heard they do not perform well. Well, we've gone through a winter now, and I can tell you that most of the concerns that people have are simply not true. The battery, when it's really cold, yes, it does decrease its range. This morning, for example, it's minus 14 outside. And when I got up to get in the car, the range was 330 as opposed to over 400 like it would be in the summer. So not that much of a difference. I don't have a garage either. People think you need to have a garage with the charger. It would be nice to have a garage. I wouldn't have to clean off my car. But these are the same problems you have with the gas car as well. The convenience of a garage is great. You don't need it to have your charger. We haven't had any problems at all with our charger being outside. That's another misconception. The other thing is that they don't perform well in the winter. Well, this is only a two wheel drive and it performs great. Good winter tires go a long way. Another thing too is I can precondition the car to set the charger from my phone to stop, to finish its charge right before I'm ready to leave. So on those really cold days, I will do that. If I have to go on a long trip that day, that conditions the battery, keeps the battery nice and warm, and I can actually turn on the car to warm it up while it's plugged in so I'm not losing any charge. Really cool feature. 
So as you can tell, our EV experience has been amazing. We are so happy with it. We want to give a huge thanks to the folks at All EV and Steel Auto Group for helping us, kind of guiding us along in this journey, answering all of our questions. It's made us realize that the time is now for EVs. One of the biggest shockers for me though overall is the convenience of driving electric. I thought that it was going to be much more difficult to do. The fact we can charge at home, just like we do with our iPhone, plug in it at night, it's fully ready to go the next day. With the battery technology and the recycling of the batteries and how quiet it is, the environmental reasons, you know, the cost savings for charging, it's been an easy transition. Um, so thank you so much for listening. If you do have any more questions, please write them in the comments below. Join, if you're, if you're thinking about buying an EV, look at some of these groups that are out there. EVAC, which is the Electric Vehicle Association of Atlantic Canada, is a great resource. I can't wait to keep this electric vehicle journey going. So thank you for listening. We'll see you out there on the trails. Keep loving our beautiful planet. Keep helping to protect it and keep exploring. Thank you very much. For Mayford Adventure, we'll see you next time.